And it's interesting you say that the the lecture that I listened to that I referenced earlier, that YouTube lecture, is saying that we also really do need to distinguish this from traditional seizure because, you know, these psychogenic non-epileptic seizures cannot lead to brain damage, at least as ah. we uh, understand them now, whereas traditional seizures can. You know, traditional seizures, of course, you know, those people need to be potentially even intubated. They need to go to the hospital right away. But psychogenic non-epileptic seizures do not cause brain damage, is at least what he was talking about. And no concern for respiratory uh, cessation, right? That's at least, look, his words, not mine. Don't shoot the messenger. But, you know, and but like I said, you know, you also sometimes people with psychogenic non-epileptic seizures also do live with epilepsy. It's not mutually exclusive. I've seen. So it's it's extremely challenging to make this diagnosis. And unfortunately, the prognosis isn't amazing either. You know, uh, some of the data I'm looking in front of me, there was one study that said that only 16% of people no longer had seizures six months after receiving their diagnosis. 16%. Um, And then this other study in 2013 showed that between 66 to 87% of individuals with penis, P-N-E-S, continue to experience them. So, Unfortunately, it seems like these people are not getting adequate treatment. It it really makes me sad, and that's why I wanted to do this episode today. You know, when I was even trying to help this family learn about this condition, I went on YouTube, Instagram, the regular social media. There wasn't that much stuff about this. You know, if you type in something like, you know, diabetes, I get that's, of course, way more common, but there is such a plethora of information, you know. What was it? To between two and three, 33 people per 100,000 lives with this condition. This is very, very common. And like I said, more women live with this, especially women who have experienced potentially trauma or anxiety in the past. Now we look at kind of what's going on in our society today. You know, we're seeing more and more females in particular um, self-cutting, having to deal with body image issues. Maybe that's related to their social media use, but ipso facto, perhaps that we're going to see also more cases of psychogenic non-epileptic seizures in the past too. And us psych residents and us really healthcare as a whole need to offer better care to these individuals. I can definitely see the reason for concern there. Um, So, I mean, is there anything that we can actually do besides providing support, providing education? Um, Because as far as I know, we're, we're very limited and like therapy is the only real answer Right. You know, I kind of look at it as, you know, we, we faced some significant dilemmas in this situation too, right? You know, does this person potentially go to a mental health facility? Do they just engage with outpatient-based care? Do they deal with an intensive outpatient program? All of them seemed like reasonable options and all of them seemed like kind of shitty options at the same time. You know, what I kind of envision potentially our future's career looking like is more specialized care. You know, what if this person could go home and engage with psychogenic non-epileptic seizures support groups that were available through telemedicine? You know, have them meet other individuals that live with this same condition. I think that's the solution to really solving this. You know, one of my biggest therapeutic values of my bipolar disorder is when I started actually attending bipolar disorder support groups Mm. and bipolar disorder support groups. Um, you know, it's, it's bipolar disorder is more common than this. They estimate, um, roughly 4% of the world lives with bipolar disorder. They think so way, way, way more common. I get that, but maybe that's why we need to build these kind of telemedicine based support groups, zoom support groups for this, because I think there's such therapeutic value in finding a community. Right. And anything that we can do helps, right? Because it is a fact that there's a lot of people whose lives are significantly impaired um, by psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. Just thinking back, I remember I was taking care of somebody. This is somebody that I was seeing on an outpatient basis. And he's been having so many of these um, seizure-like episodes that he literally couldn't leave the house anymore. Um, He said, whenever he goes to the hospital, especially to the emergency department for some reason, he would kind of get overwhelmed and have one of these episodes. Right. Um, and it got to a point where he literally didn't want to leave the house anymore. He said, I'm, too, I'm just too scared. Yeah. Um, and like, what, what, is the, what is the answer here? Um, at least if it was an organic seizure with associated waveform changes on EEG, um, it's, we, we have a better answer for that, right? We know like 
you know, get a, not uh, get an anti-epileptic on board, um, and hopefully keep them from having another episode in the future. Mm-hmm. But for something like uh, psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, like what what is the correct answer? Just support groups. That seems like I don't know. If I was that patient who couldn't leave my house um, because I was so terrified that this was going to happen, and I'm experiencing it to the degree where I'm literally collapsing on the floor the minute I step into a hospital Mm -hmm. because I'm so overwhelmed, I can't even remember what happened. Um, And if I'm told that I need to just attend therapy, it it seems like an inadequate solution to me. Um, So I think that just speaks to the fact that you know, this is something that we don't have all the answers to yet. Yeah. Um, and that's the truth with many aspects of psychiatry. Um, there's so many disorders that we see on a daily basis where we wish that we could do more for the patients. But the reality is we're limited in the tools that we have. And in essence, right, psychiatry is considered the last frontier of medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a field where we're, we're continuing to make new innovations, continuing to, to look at issues that need more answers. And perhaps this is one of them.